Hey everybody, this is John from Agile Off-Road. I'm gonna introduce you to the IO pedal. So the IO pedal is a pedal controller. This allows you to change the sensitivity of your pedal. These work great. We've been using them for some time now. And we'll supply you with details on that in the box and also on the website. Now we're also gonna introduce the same unit with a high idle. This allows you to set the high idle and you can kind of set and forget it. This is a great feature for those of you who have a second alternator on your RV. In this case, here's a Winnebago Rebel, and this has a second alternator. Now, I can get up in the morning, my batteries are discharged from, you know, just not driving it. <laughs> and this allows me to set the high idle in the morning, and I can run it for, say, 10, 15 minutes to give my, my batteries an extra boost. If you don't have that, you can just run this regular uh, I.O. pedal. Both these units have all the same tuning features. This one will just have the high idle setting for your uh, RV owners. Okay, so why the high idle? Higher idle is going to give you more amperage charge out of your alternator in most cases. Some alternators are more efficient, some are less efficient, but typically you're going to see more amperage charge at a higher idle. This is a 21 Winnebago Rebel. We see roughly about 80, which is pretty decent at idle, which is I think around, uh, looks like about 700 RPM, but at a higher idle, we're going to see a higher uh, amperage uh, charge. I would recommend that you uh, run the run the unit through an app. There is as well. There's going to be a puck. Here's the puck. I keep mine mounted here on the dash. I prefer to run the app. So let's open up the app. It's going to find it. You are going to sync that when you do the installation. That's all covered in the book. Now, all your settings are right here. In, in the, each one of these settings, you're going to see where you have a zero to four rating in each one of them. All this will be explained in the instructions that you get, and they'll cover the off, the traffic, eco, sport, extreme. I prefer to drive in these two modes here, either the sport or the extreme. That's just my personal preference. As well, you're also going to get a valet mode. So if you're taking the vehicle and you want somebody that's going to drive it and you're concerned about the way that they drive or you're actually valeting it, you put it into the valet mode. You also have a secure setting. You turn it into the secure mode like that. Once the vehicle is turned off, computer cycles down. Once you go to turn it back on, you will not have any throttle response. That can only be uh, turned on or off by the application or the puck. When you're out camping with people, a lot of times you wake up in the morning, people are running their vans early in the morning. That's because they've depleted their batteries overnight or if they've been out on the trail. Pretty common practice for some people to have to start up their, their, uh, their engines to charge the batteries. At idle, you're gonna get less of a charge. At a higher idle, you're gonna get a more of a charge. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the high idle feature. You're gonna see this button right here. You're gonna see a little progress bar above it. Push that and hold it down. You'll see the bar go all the way to red. It brings you to a second screen. Make sure you keep your finger on that. It's gonna stay with the default settings that are either come with the pedal box or the last setting that you've had in there. Now we're gonna to slide to unlock it. You're gonna get a disclaimer. Basically, this disclaimer is gonna tell you exactly how to operate the high idle, how the do's and don'ts. Make sure you read that, you go through that, and then you're gonna accept that. Once you've accepted it, it allows you to start it or to stop it. And now that we're sensing the throttle through the cam position sensor, you're gonna see where 1400 RPM, you're gonna see it modulate a small amount, but now we've got our 1400 RPM. And then you've got a counter here that's gonna count. Now you can adjust these while it's doing this. Like here we're gonna go all the way up to, we'll go 1700 and we're gonna to go to five minutes. You need to notice that these still stayed at the other settings. You're gonna to wanna to hit restart. And now it's gonna add the new parameters that you put in there. There's two options for turning this off. You can hit the stop button here, or you can just hit the gas pedal. If you hit the gas pedal to give it more gas, it will shut the unit off. Let's do that. Okay. So you see how that worked. Let's restart it. And then if we're gonna stop this, we want to just stop it here, push the stop. So one of the problems that you see with these uh, larger battery systems is inefficiency to charge it. Typically the best way to charge your house batteries now is not through your solar, but it's through your alternator. When you're driving down the road, you're gonna be running at a, a higher RPM, 2500 or so. 
2,000 RPM driving down the road, you're gonna be charging your batteries at the full maximum of the alternator. With the high idle, this allows you to simulate that driving down the road without actually driving down the road. As well, you don't need to sit there and hold your foot on the gas while you're doing this. So you can actually just set your high at idle, um, put a timer on there, and run it for, say, 10, 15 minutes, and that will give you a sufficient charge. You can do this several times during the day if you want. You can just do it for uh, a period of time uh, that you feel sufficient for your needs. This is a great product. Um, it's worked out really well for a lot of people. Uh, we're going to see this being used a lot with uh, some of the higher-end vehicles. Out there. So again, the high idle primarily is going to be used for your house battery, but do keep in mind this was also at the same time we're charging the chassis battery. Pretty simple install. This just plugs and plays. There are a couple of things you got to do. If you're kind of handy at the, at, the, at the house, you should be able to handle this install. Or just come in here, make an appointment with us. We'll get it done here. But the guys typically turn around in about you know 15 to, to 30 minutes, depending on the schedule of the shop. Now to install this, it's a little bit more detail. We're gonna to have to go through and get into the engine compartment. We've gotta go into the, the cam sensor and plug into the cam sensor. So this one's gonna be a little bit more of a technical install. If you're not familiar with doing that, you've gotta get into the boot on one side, bring your wire through there, zip tied up. We handle that no, here, no problem. It, again, if you're a do-it-yourselfer guy, you wanna tackle that. It's not an incredibly hard one to do, but it is a little bit more technical. 